Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship today. I'm so glad that you are able to be with us here on this last Sunday of Easter. And but it's often considered the first day of summer. So um, a few announcements as we're getting started. Um, things at the Parsonage are moving along well for the remodel. There was um, one small hiccup where they needed to get an HVAC tech involved, but um, that, things are moving forward. Um, and the plan is for some work to start on that within the next week or two. Right now, there is about $6,045 in the parsonage remodel fund. So if you would like to give specifically to that fund, you can do that with the envelopes that are in the back. Um, other than that, the office is going to be closed on Monday. I will still be available, just call my cell phone that day. Um, and we are not having coffee in Jesus Bible study tomorrow morning. Something that I would like everyone to think about cheer, um, saving some time for, all during this summer, um, local churches are going to be having a worship service on the square on the second Sunday in the afternoon, well, early evening, I should say. So um, usually from six to seven. The first one is going to be um, this upcoming June by Lighthouse Church. Zion is going to be leading the one I'm meeting in July. Um, the, you will experience the wide range of worship styles that we have within the Hartford City community. Um, it's going to be something to really just go experience something new um, and see how our fellow brothers and sisters worship together. Um, to let you guys know, the pastors are really um, collaborating on this. When I told them that we have a okay PA system, but probably not something that would be suitable for that large of a venue, one of the other pastors said, oh, don't worry about it, I can bring mine. So um, we are really collaborating with this, and so I encourage you to um, attend both science and all the others, um, just to kind of be with other Christians, even the ones that aren't usually in the pews next to you. So the last thing is, um, right now we do have a worship music and memorial committee meeting planned for Tuesday, where some new hymns will be chosen. Make sure to get your hymn requests into the little basket that's in the back of the church. Um, we'll continue to take requests, um, but we'd like to get as many of them as possible. So um, be sure to go ahead and leave those um, after worship today. <coughs> Excuse me, it's not the poor thing. <coughs> One very last thing is that we do not have our organist here today. Um, she <coughs> is taking a well-deserved vacation with some friends. Um, and she worked to find us a substitute that was available, and so she took it upon herself to record all of the music for us ahead of time. <coughs> so um, and thank you to Margaret for doing that for us so that we had some music to sing with today and um, your patience as there may be some pauses during our worship today as I'm getting that ready. Do we have any other announcements as we're getting started? Okay. Then I ask you to stand as you're able. We're beginning with our Thanksgiving for baptism. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy. 
and our sin is bound forever. You open the gates of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm the troubled waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now, breathe upon this water. Awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst. Cleanse our hearts. Wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen.
following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their seat in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were there, who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. When he and his entire family were baptized without delay, he brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Yes, he is God. The next one we will read responsibly, Psalm 97. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of the isles be glad. The clouds and darkness surround the Lord, righteousness and justice are the foundations of God's throne. Fire goes before the Lord, burning up enemies on every side. Lightning strikes the world, your mercy sees and troubles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. And the heavens declare your righteousness, O Lord, and all the peoples see of your glory. Confound be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before the Lord, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You love the Lord, great people. God guards the lives of the saints and rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous, and joy for the honest of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, the righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. The second reading this morning is from Revelation chapter 22. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right uh, to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty, come. Let everyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be completely one, so that all of the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I desire those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory which you have given to me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them. I will make it known so that the love with which they have loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Dear beloved children of God, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This is one of those weeks when the things that I thought I was going to speak to you about earlier in the week ended up upended. I meet with a group of colleagues online on Tuesday morning to discuss our scripture texts for the week. And by Tuesday evening, like many of you, I sat in dismay as we heard more about the violence and the murder at the school in Texas that left more than 20 people dead. I found myself wondering, how can we talk about this idea that Jesus talks about, that all of us are made one, when it feels like we're so fractured as a society? Jesus says, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they be in us also, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. As more news emerges about this tragedy, I'm hearing a lot of division. More than one might initially think we would hear at a time like this. Why did this happen? How did this happen? Where do we place the blame? Who or what agencies did or didn't act appropriately? When it comes down to it, the division isn't really necessarily about guns. The real division is how we should address the violence that exists in the United States. Now, I thought for a long time about how I could talk about this topic from the role of your pastor instead of simply the role of a fellow citizen. Certainly, I do have my own point of view, but I've been my best to look at this today from the role of your pastor. I recognize that many people and many faithful people do not hold similar positions on how to fix this issue. Some believe greater restriction on firearms is the best answer, and some believe that greater security and the use of things like metal detectors is the way to go. Others advocate for practices like arming teachers or all variety of ways to fix this thing. But what is clear is that the solution to this very important problem is not something that we in this nation are all one about. It isn't even something that the faithful at churches across our nation are all one about. And I suspect, though I have not taken a poll, that it is not something that the faithful here today or that usually attend worship at Zion are all one about. 
Now, there have been a lot of contentious issues in the news just in the last few months, not to mention the entire struggle and disagreement that happened around the pandemic, which was a challenging time in and of itself. How do we address the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine? What should we think about the debate, debate on Roe v. Wade? How do we address the issue of gun violence? And what I've noticed in the debate with all of these things, and so many other issues, is that we spend so much time talking about how we are different from those that are on the other side, that we forget how very much alike we are. We have forgotten that prayer that Jesus said, that we may all be one. Now, I'm not foolish or Pollyanna-ish enough to believe that that means that everyone is always going to simply agree with one another. And different points of view are not necessarily a bad thing. They can yield creativity and problem solving, and those things might not show up otherwise. And I don't believe that is what Jesus is talking about when he prays, they may all be one. I don't think that Jesus is necessarily saying that we should always agree about everything or that it's wrong to have disagreements. Remember to put this prayer into context. This passage is the night of Monday, Thursday. Feet have been washed and bread has been broken and wine has been shared. And Jesus is saying goodbye to his friends. He says, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their word, that means us, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Jesus doesn't seem to be asking that his disciples always agree just for the sake of agreement. He's asking that all may be one so that those who hear the message of Jesus, the disciples will be sharing, will come to believe. And there were disagreements in the early church. We Christians have been disagreeing with one another since the very beginning. But the basic message the message of God's love made known to us through Jesus has been a message where all were made one. Early followers of Jesus did not agree on anything, and in fact, there may have been a lot of things they didn't agree on at all, but they agreed to that basic message. God loves the world, and God shows us that love through Jesus. So I wonder how we could look at that in our present day. How can we look at the people who maybe are across the political aisle or who follow a different branch of Christianity from us or believe something different surrounding the issues of abortion or believe something different about the issue of gun control or believe something different around the issues of humanitarian to the Ukraine or to the pandemic or any other variety of issues? What could we do? to help the prayer of Jesus become our reality. The prayer that all will be made one. And I think it comes down to remembering not how different we are, but how much we're the same. To tackle a few of those difficult topics, I don't think that there is a single person in the entire world who doesn't believe that a world where abortion happens is a tragedy. In a perfect world, every single time that a conception happens, it would be with a healthy fetus, and it would be wanted, and it would be supported, and it would be cared about, and it would be created out of love, and the person who carried it, their health wouldn't be impacted, and there would be no complications. And I think that's where we can be concerned in the fact that all have been made one. The differences we have are about the role of the government and at what stage of pregnancy and um, whether an elective abortion is ever appropriate or what medical care should be provided to people of all income levels and all races and all ethnicities and all genders. And I think that all of us here wish we lived in a world 
But those questions didn't even need to be asked. So let's just sit with that for a moment. And recognize that all of us, no matter how we feel that we should make that into a reality, all of us see that reality and see that as a sad thing. That's where we are one. That's what Jesus is great for. I don't think that there is anyone in this world who believes that gun violence is just okay. I don't think that there's anyone in our pews who thinks that violence like something that happens should be something that's commonplace. I don't think that anyone would argue that what happened in Texas this week is okay or that it's fair. I think every single person in our nation would say that this was horrible and a tragedy, and it made us tear up and our hearts hurt. And we are all one when it comes to that point. We may disagree on how to reduce or end gun violence. We may believe different things about how to not get firearms into people's hands that would do violence. We have all sorts of different ideas about how to address it. We all know that this is not the way a healthy society can function. We are all made one in the reality that this isn't the way we want it to be. All of us recognize that something must change. All of us are made one because all of us start at that place. Now I could go on. Every single contentious issue has a place where we go back and we find an agreement and a meeting of minds. And it might take some work and some effort, but it is there. If we see how alike we are, we can see the humanity in the other person who believes differently. And that's how we can see that we have been made one. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Jesus prays for us, that all may be made one. Not because we have to agree for the sake of agreement, but so that the world may believe this message from God. We are made one not so that we can't think for ourselves or so that we can't have different points of view. We are made one so that we can better share the message of God. When we find the ways that we are the same, when we find the places where we can agree, even on the most contentious of issues, we show who we are as children of God. When we stop and are able to say, all of us agree that gun violence is tragic and we need to find ways to end it, we have been made one. When we were able to say, I would love to live in a world where abortion was never sought out, we have been made one. And we are made for one singular purpose, we are made one, excuse me, for one singular purpose. We are those who have a message of love to share. To love God, to love our neighbor as best as we are able, even those we disagree with, disagree with, and even those we vehemently disagree with. As in the end, we are all one. We are one because our love of God and God's love for us in return. And so, my dear beloved children of God, I ask for you to do your best even when it's imperfect, to look for where you are the same as those you disagree with. It is with understanding that we have the same humanity, loved by God the same, that we can really start to show the love of God to the rest of the world. Jesus prayed, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. 
As you, Father, are in me and I in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Jesus is praying for us. And if Jesus is praying for us to be made one, we owe it to God, and we owe it to ourselves, and we owe it to our world to do our best to make that happen. Amen. Pass our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he has seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally God from the Father, God from God, light from light, 
especially those experiencing division. Be our source of unity in a troubled world. God, in your mercy, stir within us your Holy Spirit to give us words to share your story. Be with us as we look for you in the everyday and give us the courage to share the good news in word and deed. God, in your mercy, Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to conflicts that arise among nations and peoples. Be with the leaders of nations in the midst of conflict. Inspire them to look toward peace. God, in your mercy, Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or worry. We pray especially today for Rita, Carolyn, Linda, Nancy, Carolyn, Sue, Max, Nyla, Elanda, Bill, Glenda, Betty, Iris, John, Ron, Gary, and those we name either a lot silently or loud. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith. God, in your mercy, stir imagination and understanding throughout the church. Draw together the ministries of Blackford County and the surrounding area. Lead us to cooperation and to act as your one holy church. God, in your mercy, be with those who are impacted by gun violence. Raise up prophetic speakers to voice the pain of survivors so that all voices are heard. Open our ears to the laments and fears brought on by violence. Inspire all leaders to promote public safety. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I like to share the peace with one another.
do not pass the collection plate during this time, but if you wish to, you may give at the back of the sanctuary. These are gifts of God given for God's church. We continue with our offering song. us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Praise to you, O God, for your word of life, creating a wondrous universe, proclaiming freedom from captivity becoming the song of your people. We praise you, O God, for your word. We praise you, O God, for your word. Your word is made flesh among us. With Mary in the garden, you call us by name. With Thomas beholding your wounds, you call us to believe. With sheep of other folds, we are gathered by your voice. Your word names our death and our life. A seed that falls down to earth and dies, rain and snow that come down from heaven to water the earth, a vine in which we abide. Through your word you appoint us to bear fruit, fruit that will last. We bless you, O God, for your word. By your living word, we are witnesses to these things. Breathe into us your Holy Spirit. Open our minds to understand the scriptures. Give us wisdom to declare what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Fill us with strength and love, not in word or speech alone, but in truth and action. With every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, and all that is in them, we join in the hymn of all creation as we thank you, O God, for your life-giving word. We thank you, O God, for your life-giving word. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us now into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. People of God, receive this blessing. God, author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen.
and now go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.